What's going on everybody? It's Brandon here with Roadrunner Sports and today we have a special live. We are going live with the one, the only, the non-elite runner, Kofuzi. He is a prolific shoe reviewer and he comes from Chicago. Well, I guess that's where he's residing. And we're super excited to talk to him about shoes, about his running routine and just all things running. Whenever he decides to join into the live chat, I will accept him and we can begin talking about all things shoes. So we're super excited for this one. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. Thanks for being here. No problem. Thanks for having me. Good to see you here. And I see there's a lot of familiar and friendly faces in the live stream today as well. So good to see everybody. Hi. Thanks for having me on. Great. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's the first thing we could cover is that uh, you are now a prolific live streamer. <laughs> Every day you are you're gracing the internet with some new content. You can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it started back kind of once I heard that countries like Italy and Spain were getting locked down and people like didn't have a way of running, number one, and, or like keeping in contact with their run groups as like other places had to lock down. And I thought we, we need to make sure we're all still sticking together. And if we can't physically have our run groups, we can virtually have our run groups. And so, I mean, this was way before like everyone got tired of like Zoom meetings and like Zoom happy hours and stuff. But I started doing Instagram lives like this. Um, I was doing them twice a day to cover all of, like the time zones, specifically for like Italy, Spain, Europe, like the places that were like hardcore lockdown. Um, I did that at six in the morning local time and then I did one at three o'clock now. And so um, once Spain and Italy opened back up, I said goodbye to the 6 a.m. live stream, but I'm still doing one every day, almost every day, uh, at 3 p.m. So like right now. So yeah, this is the is one for today. Is like after a run, are you talking through your latest regimen? Are you just engaging with the chat or how's the, how's the uh, kind of thing going on there? Um, it's relatively loose in terms of format. I try to make it as much kind of like what people would talk about either during a run or after a run as like if you were in a real group. So like the idea is just that it's the same conversations that you would have with your running group. Um, but we're just not all together. We're doing it, uh, virtually either on YouTube live stream or on Instagram live. And so uh, sometimes it would be after a run. Sometimes you talk about, uh, you know, running stuff and I ask, answer a lot of running questions. But most of the time we talk about like pooping, you know, that comes up a lot. We talk about eating and just food generally, not necessarily like run nutrition, but like, you know, the stuff that runners and regular people are kind of like talking about. That's what we talk about. So it's been a lot of fun. Definitely. I feel the same thing when I'm out with like my groups. It's like we talk about any, I feel like food comes up a lot because it's like, mm -hmm. how are you feeling today? And that's largely dependent on kind of what your diet is, which is interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, obviously everything is so different right now. Things are just kind mm -hmm. of insane all over the place, but it seems like we're finding a new sense of normalcy within this craziness and people are coming to the conclusion that, okay, we're, we need to adapt and move forward. Like, do you think that this could be kind of the future of run groups per se, if we can't really be getting together? Or maybe this is like a format that more people would adopt? Uh, I mean, I think that it's gonna be something that's more interesting to more people um, going forward, even like once everything kind of like gets back to normal, I think that there'll still be more people than ever that like started listening to live streams and participating yeah. in these kinds of like, virtual not even just like conversations like this but also like virtual like group fitness or virtual yoga or virtual like getting a group together and getting on Zwift. you know i think that that was kind of not fringe but not a, 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 like a, a lot of people but i think that even once we can get back to our regular running groups i think we'll still have some of our virtual kind of running groups too so i think that's something that's going to stick around or i hope it does because yeah. i've been having a lot of fun with, with my group yeah, there's a format that I've seen on YouTube with it. It's like a super niche community. It came up in my sidebar as things do on YouTube. And it was uh, they're, they're motorcyclists who, you know, they're wearing a GoPro on their helmet and they mic themselves mm -hmm. up. They just yeah. drive around and they just talk. They just chat. It's kind of like a podcast, but kind of like yeah. a cycling, not a cycling, a, a motorcyclist group, like a, a Cade, or it ends with a Cade, mm -hmm. motorcade. It's like, yeah, a, yeah. like a mobile motorcade. And I'm thinking if there's something to that with running, like maybe in the future we strap GoPros on our head and we just go on a nice light map run, you know, low heart rate and we just chat. And maybe that's something that people would find interesting. It's just like the overall, I don't know, kind of a substitute for their run group. Maybe they put it in while they're on their runs. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that that would be pretty interesting of a concept. I kind of like that idea, except I think with running, it'd be a lot of huffing and puffing. So yeah. that could be like really weird if there's like 12 people, like all like panting coming in through <laughs> your earbuds. But I think that there's definitely something to like that style of like, like less scripted or less structured kind of like even live stream as unstructured as live streams can be. Sure. Cause like Gary Robbins has been doing something like that. He goes on his trail run, he brings his 360 camera and he just kind of talks at it for like 30 minutes as he's running down the hill. And um, he answers questions. I think he like gets the collections of questions ahead of time, has them in mind. And I think he just memorizes what the questions are and talks for like an hour. You know, and so you get to see where shape to do that, which is I know. super impressive. I know he's holding the camera. Yeah. <laughs> holding the camera, running downhill, memorized questions and like just doing it all. He's he's amazing. But I think that there's something to that because it's it's like that experience of like when you go for a run with your running buddy, you know, you just have that conversation where you're not necessarily like looking at them and that's very similar to like I can have a podcast or a live stream on in the background while I'm working. It's kind of like in that, in your mental space, I think it occupies a similar like area and it yeah. resonates in that similar way. And so like the running group conversation and I think like the, the running group virtual, I think can function in similar ways, even though right now we're not running, you know? Yeah. So I think, I think it's pretty cool. And that's where I'm jealous of people like bicyclists and motorcyclists that can like, go on their activities and like talk during their activities a little bit more yeah. easily than, than runners can, you know, so. Yeah, yesterday I was on a, I was on a bike ride actually and I was going like mm -hmm. 18 miles per hour, which is pretty mm -hmm. good pace for me. And uh, I got a phone call in through Bluetooth and I just tapped, yeah. hello? Yeah. And they're like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm riding my bike. And I was yeah. to maintain conversation because once you build momentum, it's a lot easier. But with running, mm -hmm. there is no real momentum. You have to kind of continue yeah. to, get yeah. after it. it's interesting so i guess in mm -hmm. terms of like running slow and possibilities for that when you're like running at a slower pace which i know you've been doing lately mm -hmm. testing out different uh running methods obviously being the technical shoe guy you are what like goes into your decision on like what shoe am i going to wear for this type of run is it about the shoe is it about the uh, midsole technology is it about just how you're feeling that day yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I think probably how I'm feeling that day and like what kind of run I have coming up, you know, and so, uh, you know, a lot of my runs are kind of like middle distance and just generally a little bit in the easy range. And so for that, I've been loving a lot of daily trainers and the max cushion shoes and the shoes that are kind of like in the mix. So there's like, there used to be daily trainers and max cushion. Now there's daily trainers that have a lot of cushion and max cushion shoes that are a little bit faster to run in. And so there's like a mixing of those two categories. So there's a lot to choose from in that world. So I've been really happy because that's an area I think with a resurgence of more runners entering kind of like the, the um, kind of like the marketplace. There's just more different options that are there. So it's been great. But then there's other times when I have workouts. And so if, do I have a short workout or do I have a fast long workout? Like which kind of workout is it? There's other shoes that can kind of fit in there too. Now there's shoes that can do all those things and that's great for a lot of people, but it's also nice from like a guy that reviews shoes perspective that, you know, I can like have a set of like justifiable criteria where like, all right, it's this kind of workout today. It's like, you know, an hour long fart lick. I'm going to look for this kind of shoe or am I doing like 800s and 400s? I'm looking for this other kind of shoe. And so it's, it's, it's nice to be able to kind of match the shoe to the job. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to get your perspective on a certain shoe. I don't know if you have it mm -hmm. yet. Maybe we can definitely get it in your hands if you don't, mm -hmm. but you just did a, a, sh a video on the previous version and mm -hmm. the shoe I have here is the Wave Rider 24. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I saw that you put in a ton of miles in the 23 and you have mm -hmm. crunched that back plate down. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of the reason I asked that question is because this shoe for me was definitely very much like it's a certain type of run because of the technology in the mm -hmm. shoe. So it's kind of mm -hmm. based off my experience. Um, what are you, with this type of shoe, it's like obviously a different type of technology than most other brands are putting out. Like where does that kind of fall into your lineup or what considerations do you take in? Yeah, I mean, I haven't tried the 24 yet um, and I'm super excited to try it because it's a new phone for this year. And so, um, I mean, it's not often where a, a, like a legacy shoe that's something that's in like the 20s 
undergo is such a substantial change. And I think it's a pretty big change for this year. But from the 23, you know, what I would pick for the 23, usually when I see something like um, lots of tech, when all the technology is based like in the heel and yeah. it's a 12 millimeters tack height shoe, like all those things kind of put together, that kind of tells me that it's more of like a daily trainer slash like, you know, more towards like relaxed, slower miles, something where you want to make sure you're getting out there easy, getting moving, but you know, you want to minimize the impact on your body as much as possible. So maybe you, I would pick a daily, a max cushion trainer for that day or something like the ride 23 would be great. The ride 13, I think is also a good choice or any of the other max cushion shoes. So that's a kind of where I'd put all of those. So that's how I'd pick for that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's like as reviewers, we we run all these shoes and mm -hmm. you really have to put them through different paces because the first time I put this shoe on, I, I kind of was under a time crunch. So I was going at a quicker mm -hmm. pace and mm -hmm. uh, my feet were killing me. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh man, like I, I ran the 22, the 23 and now the 24. I was like, what happened? And I said, you know what? That's mm -hmm. not fair. Let me, let me give it another ride. And then yeah. uh, I slowed my pace down by about like a minute and a half. And I loved the shoe. It felt fantastic mm -hmm. because... I would slow down, my gait was different than all the technology is in the heel, like you said, and it's a completely different experience. And I'm wondering if there's a shoe that you've ran in where like on first impressions, you thought like, this is just not for me. And then mm -hmm. after a couple more runs, it's really changed your perspective on it. Yeah, absolutely. The one that comes to mind is the Evo ride, which is a shoe that I eventually ended up really, really enjoying. But on my first run with it, I took it on kind of one of my regular easy runs, which is the, the majority of my runs. And I was like, I don't know how I'm supposed to run in this. It just doesn't seem comfortable. Am I supposed to heel strike? Because all the ride shoes, they all look so curved. So I'm like, is this a yeah. heel strike shoe? Should I run shorter sh gate, longer gate? I was like, no matter what I did with it, like that first easy run, I was like, I, I don't know. I like flight foam, but I don't understand what's happening with this shoe. And then uh, I ended up talking. Well, I was thinking, you know what? I need to try some other speeds. And I was thinking along that way anyway. But I ended up going for uh, a group run. I was down in Austin and I talked with an A6 rep and he was like, try running fast in it. He just left it at that. And I was like, okay. So the next time I had like a tempo run, I put him on and I was like, ooh, now the shoe makes sense. So like, that's why like sometimes people are like, I get a hard time from some people that are like, man, you're, you're making too big a deal. You're just running shoes. I should be able to run all these things in them. To an extent, that's true. But to another extent, some of them are pretty have a pretty specific use case and some people can run in a wider range of activities when a certain shoe than other people can but i felt like that was one shoe the evil ride where i was like i like it to run fast i don't like it to run like an easy day run and so i don't i totally understand your experience but i did had it with like i went slow when i should have gone fast in it yeah definitely i do want to acknowledge something in the comments real quick Salvador sure. and Lopez mentioned, are you guys going to acknowledge your followers and let us ask questions? Of course, we want to ha answer sure. all your guys' questions. Um, in fact, we have a question right now. I think it's a perfect time if you guys want to ask a couple mm -hmm. questions and then we'll, we'll answer those and uh, get back to chat and then let you guys kind of come mm -hmm. up with some more questions. So question from Heidi, do you have any advice or tips for a brand new runner looking for a supportive running group during this crazy COVID time? I want to jump in before Mike and say, mm -hmm. I recommend his live stream because uh, that's what we were talking about. I don't know if you joined later, but uh, he's live streaming every day at 3 p.m. I'm not sure what time zone, but um, I'll let him kind of take it away from there and answer the rest of the question. Yeah, I, we do at 3 p.m. Central Time every day, and it's a variety of uh, paces and groups. I mean, it's virtual. We're not running, but it's like a run group because we all run um, or engage in some other sort of acti uh, physical activity. Some of them are runners who bike more, but do some running too, uh, different age groups and uh, abilities. Uh, and we just talk about running most of the time. Sometimes we don't. And so that's, we are always supporting each other. I'm working on a new set of uh, sound effects because a lot of times people will say, hey, I had my first good long run today after coming back from injury. And so I've been tinkering with different cowbell sounds because I feel like you need to celebrate whenever you have your victories. Bells. Yeah, yeah. So I have a couple yeah. different ones. More cowbell kind of, is good. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love it. And so um, so that's something that we like to do is celebrate each other's victories. But also, you know, there's times when we're not feeling good about stuff and we kind of can commiserate and support each other. Um, the other thing that I would suggest doing, especially in this crazy time, is even though you might not be able to run with people 
um, to get physically right now, those people are still like active in the running community virtually and in, in real life. And I would look for the other people that are running like on Strava or on Instagram, figure out like kind of what groups that they're in um, and figure out what the local groups are in your area. And so you can kind of get a sense of what they are. Uh, it usually becomes pretty clear once you kind of see a couple of people, like what are the kinds of people that this group like kind of appeals to. And so you can get a sense of that and kind of pick and choose which groups you want to be in. Yeah. And I think a good question that pairs off of that by uh, Nick, I'm, I don't want to put your last name, but by uh, Nick, um, any advice for getting back into running after stopping since quarantine started? And obviously one piece of advice mm -hmm. is to look at those Strava groups and to mm -hmm. look at the people in there and try and get inspired and see what, what kind of fits you, find the community around you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I think that a good way to get back into it is slow and steady, especially right now where you're not probably you're probably not going to be signing up for a race. So it's not necessarily a couch to 5K situation, but you can follow those couch to 5K kind of plans if you want to do that. But I would say overall, you know, focus on your consistency and, and enjoyment. You know, right now, more than ever, running is about just having a good time and feeling good uh, about yourself and about your progress. So focus on that. It's easy to get caught up in like, all right, I was running for a while. I got to get back into it. I'm going to go at it hard. Then you do that. The next two days, you're super sore. And then the third day, you don't really feel like running. It's really self-defeating to try to match that previous level of like, this is where I was at. So I got to come back here. Just don't worry about that. You'll get back there, but just kind of go where you are and ease back into it. Work on the consistency so you can have that enjoyment throughout this time and getting back into running yeah i felt the same type of success anytime mm -hmm. i've taken a break it's just mm -hmm. nice go out with no expectations and just mm -hmm. just go out just take it take your first step and kind of just see where the run takes you and uh you know next day do it again you want to feel good yeah. the next day you don't want to feel in pain because then you're not going to enjoy your run mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody is working on retooling their running form and their objective is to uh jeff runs on caffeine is trying to retool their running form for this year. I'd like to hear more about that if you want to add some detail, maybe we can go into that a little bit. So Mike, how do you find like your running form? Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> she found uh, a koozie and the batteries. So she just wanted to share. Um, can you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> All right. Um, so in terms of retooling running form, I'm probably the worst person to add to yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for putting it there. Um, I'm probably the worst person to answer that question because I don't, focus too much on my running form. I, I tend to think that your running form retools itself as you're running more and getting stronger. This is how she uses to cut her Play-Doh, everybody. Okay, thank you. Do you wanna go see what mommy's doing? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, but she likes to come on up whenever we do the live stream, so. Great. Yeah, I but, mean, for myself, uh, as far as form goes, I just try and make sure the core is engaged. Mm -hmm. And if I ever find myself dragging my feet, just try and pick the knees up. And that's really as far as I get into it when it goes to form. Um, I also keep it pretty simple. Mommy, I think there's maybe things. some more technical people in the comments Mommy's who might be able to yeah. that, So what do we have here? Mommy's all piggy bank. It's a, it's a pink teddy bear piggy bank. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, some teddy bears lying around here in the form of dogs, but they all leave right, me alone cool. for now. All right. Cool, let's see if we have any other questions. Um, how many cousins does Kofuzi actually have? And that's by Jameson Wren, so. Hmm. Well, I got, I got Jamie's my cousin, um, and then I got lots of cousins. So everybody's my cousin, so <laughs> I, got, I got so many. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe I think this would be a good discussion for us to have. Somebody mentioned that they are in between the Meta Racer and the Endorphin. I have not mm -hmm. tried the Meta Racer, but you have the pro and the speed here. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I could weigh in a little on that and you can talk about the meta racer. Sure. Um, so first of all, maybe we should talk about the endorphin. How was this shoe for you? It's uh, kind of an innovation in when it comes to the carbon plated shoes or plated in general, since they have a second type of um, plate in the other shoe. But overall, how was the shoe for you? Uh, I really liked the shoe, but um, I felt like I wasn't Maxima, I wasn't getting the full potential out of this shoe. So I felt like it was a good shoe, but I felt like it was capable of more that I had a hard time unlocking. So it felt a little bit off 
to me. So, I mean, it was com uppers comfortable. The foam's great. The carbon plate's great. Um, but I was like, mm, I, I mean, I, it didn't make me have a bad experience, but I just know that there's more to the shoe that I'm not unlocking. And yeah. I just think I'm not fast enough or heavy enough or strong enough, one of those two things. The yeah, speed I, I like a lot more. In your, uh, in your review that you felt like maybe you weren't heavy enough to kind of like compress down on the plate, mm -hmm. which I think is, is a real factor, especially depending on like where you're striking in your gait. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And have you ran in the meta racer? And is that also a plated shoe? I, I personally haven't. Yeah, the meta racer is a plated shoe, but it's a very different. So it's kind of like the idea of, you know, there was this time where all, sh all racing shoes were flats. And then Nike came in with the ZoomX and super st thick stack height and the carbon plate. They weren't the first ones to do it, but they put all that together. And it was like, now this, now this is what race marathon racing shoes are like. The meta racer is kind of like, what if we never had that and kept going with like the racing flat and then started adding carbon fiber to it. That's kind of what it feels like. And it's a really fun shoe to run in, but I feel like, kind of like the pro but for different reasons i can't run a marathon in it so i can't like fully use it to that marathon distance because there's not enough underfoot for me because it after a while i'm like my feet are just not strong enough to run an entire marathon with the shoe on yeah i definitely on longer runs prefer like a big cushion shoe and i see mm -hmm. there's a point of discussion right now in the comments about a6 a little riot has been started by jane about a6 and, uh, <laughs> especially the new technology they have which i think is awesome i mean i think yeah. jamie there is a chance that asics may become great again um your yeah. tagline is working and maybe it's just the flight foam blast i think is what it's called but mm -hmm. that stuff is incredible i know that you had a good experience running in the shoe um where kind of does that type of shoe fall into your lineup uh for me it falls like right into the daily trainer and i think you could do a little bit of everything um i know that there are people out there that love it for their fast days I had a little bit of a harder time with that, but it can do it. It can do it. So like for people that are like, I just want to have one shoe. I run three to four times a week. Um, and like, I don't want to think about it too much. I want something that could do it all, regardless of whether I'm going on the long run with my run group, or it's a Tuesday track day with my, like my running group. I want like the one shoe. That's like a one shoe that can do it all for sure. Yeah, definitely. I've recommended the Nova Blast to a couple of people personally. They're like, Hey, what shoe should I get? And I'm kind of looking for just my one shoe. And I said, get the Nova Blast. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel the same with you on the speed days. It's great, but I felt like I didn't have enough lateral support for a speedy mm -hmm. day where I, mm -hmm. for me, I was like, that could potentially risk some injury there. And I need to keep running in all these shoes every day. So <laughs> yeah. for me, I just want to take that show on, shoe on the nice slow runs. And it's, I mean, that technology is great. I'm really excited to see what else they put it in, especially kind of some of their, you know, what if they put that in like a gel Nimbus or, you know, some or cumulus, that would be really interesting. So there's a lot of innovation to be had there. And I think it's, it's exciting time for them and just the overall shoe scene in general. I think Saucony did a good job. I was talking with uh, Andy, the FOD runner mm -hmm. last week yeah. about- I saw him know, in here. I think he's in here. Hey, Andy. I think he might still be in here about, you know, the uh, Saucony shoes and mm -hmm. how they really put out a full lineup all at once. Instead of releasing shoes throughout the year, and you mm -hmm. kind of never know what's for. They put out all the shoes at once. The shift being kind of like your everyday. Then mm -hmm. uh, I think it was the speed, then the pro, and then I think I'm missing one. I think no, there's just three. But they put out a shoe for every level mm -hmm. of your training. And I think shoe companies are kind of leaning more in that direction, of putting out like a full lineup. And uh, it's exciting. I think people are, the companies are looking for more brand loyalty. Mm -hmm. um, somebody that says, what shoe are you guys Salvador says, what shoe are you guys waiting to be released or to run in? What about you? you uh, I was waiting for the Triumph 18, but I just got my pair yesterday and I went for a run in them today. Super excited about that one. Um, I have another one, but I'll, I, I don't want to take all year, so I'll let you go next. Um, for me, I don't know. I, I've been getting a lot of shoes recently. I feel mm -hmm. like I've been overwhelmed with like an influx of shoes that I haven't really thought too far ahead. Right now, I just finished running in kind of like the Hoka lineup. I did the Clifton mm -hmm. 7. I did the mm -hmm. Clifton Edge. I, I just got the Bondi, so I put in some miles mm -hmm. on those. Um, and I, I don't really know what's coming up next, to be honest. I kind of, you know, at least being internal at Roadrunner, I kind of see what's coming down the pipeline, mm -hmm. see what fits into release schedules, and I base my running around that. But I, I've really been liking the Bondi 7. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll leave it at Very that. Very cool. 
haven't had a lot to talk about it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just put in my pre-order for the Clifton 7. So I'm excited for that to come in. But I think like the two, like I guess there's three shoes that are still left out there that like the super shoe category that I'd love to be able to get. One is the Adios Pro, which I just, yeah. I, I have a sense that I don't think there's going to be any restock to that. I think that they did a limited release just to get it out there in case anyone was going to race in them this year. And I think that's it. That's my, that, I have no yeah. way of knowing, I have no inside knowledge, but that's what I think. My, my only insider knowledge that I can share is that, um, I think they push back some releases and that's, that's yeah. all I really know. Say, <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. I don't and know then, what's going on there. But then I think also that's still like looming out there, which I don't know if we'll ever like see given the way the year is going is still, there's the rocket X, which was available. Well, not available, but at least was on the feet of, um, people of runner of the Hoka runners at the trials. Yeah. And then there's the Hyperion elite two which is still like in theory coming out this year, which yeah. that is one I'm super excited about. Yeah, and theoretically, we are going to get you some sort of exclusive knowledge there, theoretically. Okay, all right, so okay. That's still in the works, but um, let's say that they, they, seem, they seemed willing to have conversation, just they need to cool. figure out some things on there. Oh, yeah. But yeah, of yeah. course, that's always exciting. But yeah, I yeah. also have, um, I just kind of have all the shoes here that I've been running in recently, mm -hmm. but the uh, Saucony Ride 13, Mm -hmm. Fantastic shoe, um, power run, feels great on foot, nice and wide, great upper. I mean, what did you think of the shoe? It seemed like you really enjoyed this shoe. Yeah, I, I've really been enjoying it, especially for kind of like summer long miles. I mean, it's a little bit of a hot shoe, but um, for the time where you like, you just want some protection from all that concrete if you're running on roads and like an asphalt, it just soaks up miles really nicely. So yeah. like for those easy runs and those recovery runs it's a shoe that i will gladly reach for i've been really enjoying it yeah i think it's going to last a long time one of the big takeaways i had from the shoe was one it was super comfortable mostly the outsole technology i like i described it as a like gym and mat technology or like gym mat <laughs> system. like you know right. the, like the power lifters just dropping weights from like up above mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. stuff is durable i feel like that's what that is made of. <laughs> it seems very thick and dense and i yeah. think gonna be a long life life cycle to these shoes a lot of miles yeah there's a lot of rubber on on the outsole of the shoe it's it's kind of it makes me wonder I'm like why is it so thick yeah. uh it doesn't seem like it needs to be but i mean maybe that's all part of like the whole uh like market that they're going for with this shoe is a shoe that people are going to like put on log a bunch of miles, forget it for a bunch of months because you're just gonna be able to keep running on it and you don't have to worry about it. That's what I'm thinking. I think it was, it was a huge improvement on the, from the kids that came from the ISO 2 and now they're mm -hmm. on the, the 13. I'm not mm -hmm. really sure how that works, but overall mm -hmm. I think it's gonna have, have a good following from, from here on out. We have a couple of yeah. questions I wanna jump into the comments sure. real quick. Um, any Nikes for me, I'll answer that real quick. Mm -hmm. No, because my, my feet are just too wide for Nike, so mm -hmm. off to you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've I still have the Pegasus, and I've been running in that one, and I've been really enjoying it. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to pick up any other Nike shoes for this year. I think if I do, it might be like the Terra Tiger because I liked it so much last year um, that I might pick up the the new one for this year. But um, until we get to like winter time, because I do like a lot of the Shield versions of shoes, uh, I don't really have any other ones on my radar right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot about the trail shoes, the Terra Tiger and mm. the, uh, what's the other one? The uh, Wild Horse. Wild Horse. Mm -hmm. Those two seem wide enough to where I think I would mm -hmm. really enjoy them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Cycle Michael asks, how much do you all weigh? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll embarrass myself first. <laughs> I hover right around like 195, 200 pounds mm -hmm. kind of on mm -hmm. a, any given day. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Towards, yeah, towards. I'm. I'm at about 145 these days, so I'm a little bit heavier than uh, I was over the winter, which is not usually how it goes, but it's also been a lot more like chill since I haven't had like marathon training blocks to go through. So that's, I think it's about normal. Do you take a uh, weight into consideration when you're kind of training and have a certain weight that you want to be at for your races? No, I only look at weight that if I lose a lot quickly, that makes me worry that I'm not hydrating properly or I'm not eating enough. And so I look at it as signs of like something's off in terms of my in input output. Um, but like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, 
the fitness will dictate what the weight is, is kind of how I yeah. feel about it. I don't care what my weight is. Yeah. So as you kind of up your mileage, you don't really take too much consideration that more calories in, you just kind of, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of listening to the body. And so I think that cravings are your body's way of saying like, hey, you need more salt or hey, you need more liquid or you need some, if you're craving something sweet, maybe you, you're, you're low on sugar and your body is telling you those things. Now, sometimes your body can trick you into watching, wanting a lot of junk food, which I tend to want a lot of junk food. But I think that like, you know, if it's a high mileage week, you got to put a lot of fuel in to be able to accommodate that. And so, um, you know, listen to it, give it what it needs. That's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah, I kind of fall into the same camp. It's like mm -hmm. if I'm training a lot, my body's just, it starts asking for a lot. So then I just put more in and I end up mm -hmm. kind of just staying at the same weight. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Jamie runs. Who is faster, Brandon or Kofuzi? I'll just concede this to, to Mike. <laughs> No I think it. I think it would depend on the distance. I think on, on the distance. Uh, I think if we were in like the marathon category, I think I might get you. But I think yeah. anything in the five k or shorter, I think you'd have me. Maybe. I, so my background that I've never really talked about, but I I was a sprinter. So I mm. anything above four hundred meters, I wasn't touching. It was not, <laughs> not me like yeah. at all. But I was also yeah. a soccer player, so I had mm. built some uh, quite a bit of endurance just running. So I was kind of able to. I'm definitely on the faster side on the shorter miles. So anything longer. Also, I don't run marathons. I run mm. half marathons because shattered ankle, that hurts after 13 miles, mm. even 10 years later. So for me, it's all about listening to the body. And yeah. my body says no to marathons. <laughs> um, which shoe in the 105 to $150 range have you loved running in the most? Hmm. I can answer that on my side. I would say the uh, Brooks Launch 7. Mm. I believe it's a $99 shoe. Um, medium cushion level. There's not a lot of technology there going on, so it's not super crazy to talk about tech-wise, but it's a really solid shoe. It's responsive, and it feels great on foot. So I would say the, the Brooks Launch 7 for me. That's a You know, I don't really pay a lot of attention to prices only when they're on like the really far ends do i notice like the yeah. prices of shoes so i'm trying to think what's my favorite um i mean i think the endorphin speed doesn't count because that's 160 i think the triumph doesn't count either because i think that's 160 as well so at 150 or in that range i think they're uh, 130 okay that would be really high up in there um I think the so Nova Blast, too. yeah, that's been a good one. The, um, I mean, the Boston 9 is one that I've really been enjoying a lot. And I've been getting a little bit more versatility out of it this year than last year, uh, which is a surprise. That, I mean, that might be just me get, becoming a stronger runner than, than the shoe. But, um, yeah, I think maybe the Boston 9 is one that I really enjoy in kind of in that person. I think that one is 120. I think I want to say I don't I don't I don't know I don't yeah. pay enough attention yeah I I mean you brought up Boston I really really enjoyed the uh, the Boston 8 I haven't been mm -hmm. to nine, but the Boston 8 was one of my favorite shoes of last year I thought it was like just really low profile really great cushion kind of mm -hmm. flat it was like it was one of the perfect shoes to me of last year for sure um somebody says what did it say what is what shoe stands up best for a heavier runner that's by Cycle Michael uh, as the heavier mm. runner in this conversation, <laughs> uh, I would say go with something like the Hoka, a any Hoka really. It, they're all fantastic in terms of cushion level. And you, somebody mentioned the 1080 V10. Uh, I haven't mm -hmm. rated that shoe, but we have another runner at Roadrunner who's reviewed that shoe, and he's about the same body composition as me. He loves it, um, you know. So I, I would try one of those out. Yeah, I'd also uh, add in the Triumphs in there, the 17 or the 18, yes. which is brand new. I feel like. It's a heavier shoe for me, but um, it doesn't feel heavy on foot, but there's so much stack height in there. And it's one of those max cushions that I think is like a, tr a daily trainer in disguise. Yeah. That I think that I consider it max cushion, but I think a lot of people are gonna love it, both the 1080 and the Triumphs, um, if, you're, if you're a taller or a bigger runner, for sure. Yeah. Um, Salvador Lopez asks, do you guys train with weightlifting, Mike? I don't train with weightlifting. I try to do like a uh, body weight routine for legs. Um, I don't do it nearly as much as I should. 
I don't really like the weight, uh, a weightlifting routine because basically everything that I used to know how to do um, from like college is now considered bad for you. And I just feel like I'm just going to hurt myself. Yeah. So uh, I also just like running a lot of miles and it kind of interferes. And so um, I like to do body weight stuff because then I could still run a lot. Definitely. Yeah. And disclaimer before I answer this question, anybody who's looking to improve their running and become a better runner, listen to what Mike says, not what I say. <laughs> <laughs> not not I, always. I, I run in a lot of shoes. I know how yeah. they feel, but I am not yeah. as a non-elite jogger as mm. uh, as Mike. But for me, I, I do incorporate some weight, weight training into my mm. workout routines. Um, obviously, the gyms have been closed. I have a 40-pound dumbbell, 30-pound dumbbell, and some 12s. And before I went on my run today, I did about 15 minutes. I usually start off with a lot of squats, single-legged, and then kind of hamstring pulls. And then um, I do some upper body kettlebell swings and then push-ups. I keep it really simple. Um, and yeah, I just try and keep it as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Just a little resistance to the muscles, keep mm -hmm. them right, and then go on the run. So once again, disclaimer, Mike is the expert when it comes to long distance, not expert, but if you want to put a lot of miles on your body, yeah. this is the guy who's done it. <laughs> Um, so yeah. I'll listen to him there. Big disclaimer. <laughs> uh, Jamie, I'm going to ignore that comment. <laughs> Is he just trolling? I haven't He's even trolling. talked to him. He's trying that. to start in the comments. <laughs> That's uh, really Chris wants to know, what's the distance to your heart? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that question. I don't know how to answer some of these questions. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Asics glide ride versus Saucony endorphin shift. I haven't ran I, the shift. I haven't ran in either of those two shoes. So I ran in the Evo ride and the Meta ride, which was a weird shoe, but I haven't run, run in the Glide ride. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, both. I think both brands have put a lot of good work into shoes recently and things are becoming a lot more um, democratic or I don't know, just easier to you can go to either way and then any, every brand is going to give you something good mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I've been versus questions now, <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been um, trying to get the shift, but Roadrunner sports has been sold out for a long time. Yeah. Or, I think yeah, with, so yeah. The slight information I can give is that Saucony has, they just had some, some delays essentially. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just been across the board there. But we're getting a lot of versus questions now. Uh, okay. These are fun. Saucony oh, yeah. Triumph versus Endorphin. I'll say they're very, very different shoes. Mike? Um, I mean, I think it depends on uh, which one. I haven't run in the shift yet, but um, uh, I think that would probably be the closest one to the Triumph because the shift has, I think the shift has more stack height than um, Triumph. So that'll be interesting to kind of check out once I can because um, it's Power Run Plus versus Power Run PB and just gobs of stack height on each one. So it should be plenty underfoot to keep you um, well cushioned. So that will be an exciting one, but I don't have an answer for that one yet. All right, cool. All right, guys, we have been talking for 40 minutes. I definitely mm -hmm. want to give you guys a chance to add a couple more questions mm -hmm. in there. We'll get to those, and then uh, we'll wrap it up just so we're not taking up too much of everybody's time. Thanks, everyone, for being here, for sure. We're not ending mm -hmm. yet. I just want to give that preface mm -hmm. um, out there. So uh, New Balance Fuel Cell TC, they've been doing a lot of innovations, and you've written mm -hmm. the TC, correct? Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of fun to run in that shoe. Um, it's a little bit tall. And so uh, it's a little, it feels a little bit squirrely if it's like a tight course, like if you're making a lot of sharp turns or if you have like a 5K course where there's a hairpin turn, like that, you're gonna slow down quite a bit. Um, but once you can get into a rhythm, it, it's, uh, it's got great kind of like uh, horsepower, you've got great highway cruising speed. So like once you get yeah. there, you lock in and you just go and it's, it's really nice to run on. Yeah, there's certain shoes that definitely, like, at different speeds, they find their groove, and you say, mm -hmm. all right, my body, even though, like, maybe your heart rate's ra rising, mm -hmm. but, like, sometimes mm -hmm. the foot and the gait, everything feels good about it, you're like, I'm just going to try and hold right here, so mm -hmm. and that's good that that shoe does that for you. Let's see, personal running coach in Ohio, hello from Italy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no Wilco, what's going on? Cool. I see him in there. All right, well. 
obviously we can expect more shoe reviews from you in the future. Um, any other plans to just kind of new content ideas for the channel or just anything you got going on? Uh, I've, I've just finished doing a longer run. I did an FKT on the Heritage Trail out here, which ended up being 30 miles. And right now I'm in like a recovery phase. So I'm, I think another week is what I'll need before I can figure out what's next. And I think that I'm going to do, like, I think I'm going to train for a, a 5K. And I'm going to do, like, a multi-week, like, rather than just, like, hey, I'm going to do a time trial on Thursday. I think I'm going to train for that. So I think that's coming up next. So I have all these, like, faster shoes that are not getting enough attention out here. And uh, they, need some, they need some love. And so I think that that's going to be a great way for me not only to, like, use the shoes, which will be fun, but... Um, you know, I've been focusing on this. High, I'll still be running a lot of miles, but I've been focused on high miles, like really long distances. I'm going to come back down to something shorter. So switch it up a little bit. Get out of my comfort zone. Definitely in like times like these, that's the type of distance that you can push yourself and not need like race support per se. So mm -hmm. I'll mm -hmm. say for anybody out there looking to really push themselves, I think it'd be a great time to just overall train with the 5K or for 5K. And if you're looking for support on that journey, I know it would be a good live stream you can join where, uh, where people <laughs> <laughs> may support you and give you tips and share their training techniques on uh, their 5K journey. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. I think we can end on that. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much for joining today. Uh, obviously, we'll try and do this again in the future. And yeah, take care. All right. Bye, everybody. We'll see ya. All right, so that was the live stream with Mike Kofuzi. It was a lot of fun. We talked about a ton of shoes, answered as many questions as we could. Um, just overall had some good fun in there. So thanks, everybody, for joining in. Uh, I am Brandon from Roadrunner Sports, and I'll see you guys on the road. See ya.